There's an ancient script that says, without a vision, the people perish. Now think about that for a moment. What does it really mean? It means that vision, having a clear picture of the future, having dreams and goals is what gives life its energy. It's what keeps us moving forward. Without it, life becomes stagnant and we lose that vital spark that makes us wake up with excitement each day. So what do you dream about for your future? Where do you want to go? What kinds of people do you want to meet? What level of success do you want to achieve? How much do you want to earn? What new skills do you want to master? Think about the kind of influence and reputation you want to build. Do you see yourself as an entrepreneur launching and running your own successful business? Or do you envision a career in management, leading others with confidence and vision? Maybe your dream is to be the best parent you can be, raising children who are strong, wise, and compassionate. Whatever it is, your vision for the future will shape your life, your choices, and ultimately your success. This is what we call the promise of the future. It's this promise that gives life its meaning. Without dreams and ambitions, life can feel a bit flat. But when you have a clear picture of where you're going, everything changes. It gives you direction. It gives you purpose. And it gives you the energy to tackle the challenges along the way. That's why having a vision is so important. Take time to really envision what you want to achieve. Picture it in your mind and let it inspire you. Because when that promise of the future is clear, you'll do whatever it takes to make it a reality. You'll put in the time, the effort, the discipline. You'll take the classes, read the books, and learn the skills necessary to reach your goals. The clearer the promise, the more willing you are to pay the price. That's where it all starts knowing what you're working toward. Now, let me tell you something. One of the most important jobs parents have these days is getting their kids to see this promise of the future. Kids need to know that there are possibilities out there waiting for them. They need to see the opportunities that exist in the world, the careers they can pursue, the adventures they can have. Because without that vision, without that sense of possibility, they're just going to drift through life. It's the same for us adults too. You've got to have personal goals and yes, you need family goals, but it's more than that. You need a variety of goals, a well-rounded set of ambitions that stretch across every aspect of your life. I like to call them reasons. You've got to have strong, compelling reasons behind everything you do. You can't just chase money, a nicer house or a better car. Those things are fine, but they won't be enough to keep you going through the tough times. You need reasons that touch your heart, reasons that inspire you. Maybe it's the future of your family or the desire to grow personally, to contribute something meaningful to the world. When you have enough reasons, whether they're for your family, your own development, or for supporting a cause you believe in, you'll find the motivation to push through anything. Those reasons will be the driving force that helps you achieve remarkable things. Look, immigrants coming to America from other countries have taught us some incredible lessons about drive and determination. I'm talking about people who have come here with almost nothing, yet they rise up to become top students, top business leaders, top innovators. Take the Russians who moved to Israel, for example. They're now at the forefront of business and industry over there. Why? Because they're hungry. They're grateful for the freedom, for the opportunities, and they don't take it for granted. They don't need special guarantees. They don't need someone to take care of them. Just give them a chance and open door and they'll climb the ladder. They'll make something of it. It's a powerful reminder for all of us. Sometimes when we've had it easy for too long, we lose that edge, we lose that hunger, that drive. But in the end, the opportunities are still there for anyone willing to see them, to grab hold of them. And maybe these recent years with all the shakeups, all the changes are exactly what we needed to remind us of that drive. The walls have come tumbling down and now is the time to reignite that hunger to seize the promise of the future. So don't let the vision fade. Keep it alive. Keep dreaming. Keep aspiring. And let that promise of the future pull you forward into the life you were meant to live. In America, we've got to rediscover a whole new sense of personal drive, personal ambition. Now, what does that mean? It means taking whatever we have, whether it's a little or a lot, and figuring out what we can do with it. If all we've got are pennies in our pockets, then we start with those pennies. If life's been tough and painful, we begin right there with the tough and painful stuff. It's about making the most of what we have, even if the odds seem stacked against us. You know, people in other parts of the world where freedom has only recently become a reality are embarking on this journey. And we can learn a lot from them. Many are starting from scratch, much like some of us might have to. But the lesson they're teaching us is profound. Don't wait around for someone to give you something. Instead, take what you've got, whatever it is, and create value. 
They're showing us that you don't need to be handed success on a silver platter. You just need the opportunity. And once you've got that, you're responsible for what you do with it. Think about those stories we hear people starting with next to nothing, facing all kinds of challenges, yet somehow finding a way to rise above them. These stories are full of risks, setbacks, and difficulties, but they also carry a key lesson. And that's what philosophy is all about. Philosophy gives us guidance. It teaches us to recognize dangers early, but more importantly, it shows us how to seize opportunities before they pass us by. That's what makes the human experience so remarkable, the fact that people, despite incredible odds, can still rise up and achieve something extraordinary. I find that fascinating. Whether it's observing others or looking at my own actions and reactions, the whole journey of life, the struggles, the triumphs just amazes me. What exactly is this path we're all on? Living here on this spinning planet, what drives us to keep pushing forward? These are the things that intrigue me. Now, when we talk about America, our industries, businesses, corporations, commerce, education, politics, everything that involves human beings, really we're talking about an adventure, a vast unfolding adventure that each of us has a part in. And I think it's important that we cultivate a curiosity about how things work and how we can contribute. How can we play our part in our families, in our communities, in our roles as good citizens or in our careers, whether we're working for a company or out there hustling as a salesperson, curiosity, that's the key. You've got to develop an appetite for learning. Start by asking questions. Say to yourself, I'm going to learn more about this. Become a better reader. Hone your listening skills. Dive into the search for knowledge. Because when you open yourself up to learning, something fascinating happens. That curiosity takes you to new heights. It pulls you forward. And before long, you find yourself on this upward trend, growing, learning, and expanding your horizons. Now to truly become valuable, whether as a leader, as a communicator, or as a contributor in any field, you've got to embrace this learning process. And not just learning for learning's sake, but learning to improve, to adapt, and to bring greater value. Think about global competition. We've got our work cut out for us, no doubt about that. But it starts right at home. It starts by becoming valuable as a parent, a teacher, a leader. And here's the real key. Don't just be a teacher, be a student teacher. Don't just be a salesperson, be a student salesperson. Don't just be a father, be a student father. In every role we play, the secret to excelling is to remain a student. Stay curious, keep learning. Because when you keep learning, you keep improving. And when you improve, you bring more value to every team, every family, every business, every community you're part of. Now, just imagine if every single one of us brought an improved version of ourselves to the table, the kind of world we could create, whether it's in our homes, at our jobs, in our schools, or on the sports field, if everyone raised their value just a little bit, we'd transform everything around us. And when we start competing as a nation, bringing that kind of value to the global stage, I'm telling you, the possibilities are endless. The 21st century holds so much potential. The opportunities are thrilling, and the achievements we can reach are beyond what we've ever imagined. But it all begins with that personal drive, working on ourselves, taking what we've got, and making the most of it. That's how we step into the future with confidence and strength. The ideas I share with people today are the same ones that had such a profound impact on my own life, especially during my early years. I never get tired of telling the story or sharing the principles that completely changed my income, my bank account, and perhaps more importantly, my overall perspective on life. These principles motivated me to set goals, build a library, and develop disciplines I once thought were beyond my reach. But I did it. I mastered them. And when I share these ideas with others, I see the same transformation in their lives. One of the greatest joys in my life is receiving letters, phone calls, and messages from people who have been touched by these ideas. As I travel around the world, people come up to me and say, Jim, I was at your seminar 10, 20, or even 30 years ago, and it changed my life. Not too long ago, a lady in Australia showed me notes she had taken from one of my seminars 14 years ago, and she still uses those notes in her business today. She said, here's what happened to my relationship with my family. And she went on to explain how those principles helped her not just in business, but in her personal life as well. That's what I live for. I don't need the money though, let me be clear, I take the money. But it's the joy I need, the joy that comes from people saying what you shared was valuable to me. Thank you for sharing. That's something money can't buy. It's the small, heartfelt messages, the individual testimonials that make it all worthwhile. One person at a time, one story at a time, and that brings me more joy than anything else. Now, the best way to deal with a poor habit is to replace it with a good one. 
If you've got some bad habits in your life, don't just focus on quitting them. Instead, start building good habits. My mother always said, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And I'll tell you, my father is 92 years old and he's never been seriously sick. I've never been ill. My children, my grandchildren, we've all followed those simple, basic habits of good health that my mother taught us. It's remarkable how such small habits consistently applied can yield such incredible results. Let's say you've got a habit like smoking that you want to quit. Instead of focusing on just stopping the bad habit, what if you started something positive? What if you got so inspired by your new positive habit that it naturally pushed out the old negative one success in my mind is about looking at your own desires, considering your possibilities and then stretching yourself, seeing if you can become all that you were meant to be earning as much as you can, sharing as much as you can and making steady progress toward your goals at success. Now imagine having access to an entire world of books, classes, music, and ideas that could open up new doors for you. Think of all the possibilities that lie at your fingertips. But if you let those opportunities pass you by, if you don't read the books or take the classes, that's a real tragedy. It's like sitting on a mountain of gold and refusing to pick up a shovel. Seminars, books, and messages like this one are here to remind you of the incredible opportunities out there, the opportunities that can transform your life. And the key is gratitude. Instead of focusing on what's wrong, let's be grateful for what's right. Let's reach out and seize what's available to us and let it start working in our lives today. As I study and explore, I'm constantly amazed at the sheer number of opportunities out there. There are so many starting points, so many possibilities of where someone can begin and eventually go. The potential for transformation is overwhelming. The journey of life is one of discovery, growth, and evolution. It's about tapping into those opportunities, stretching yourself beyond what you thought possible and seeing just how far you can go. There's no limit to what you can achieve. Once you open yourself up to learning, growing and embracing the potential that lies within you. Life is rich with possibilities. It's up to you to go out and claim them. Firstly, it's important to recognize that life is an incredible adventure. Once you embrace that, it opens the door to a whole new world of possibilities. You start thinking, what could I truly accomplish if I learned the lessons, adopted the right disciplines, read the books and fed on ideas like bread for the mind with the right mindset and skills. There's no telling how far you can go. It's like unlocking a door you didn't even know existed and discovering what you're really capable of. Now, here's a good phrase for you. Everything by longevity tends to get off course. Meaning as time goes on, things naturally drift unless we correct our course. It's why you need to refine things regularly, your habits, your routines, even your thought processes. You might be doing well financially, plenty of money in the bank, but what about the systems in your life that aren't working? You can get faked out by success. The bank account might be full, but if other systems in your life, your health, your relationships, your habits are falling apart, you're in trouble. It's like having a shiny car that doesn't run well under the hood. The lesson here, regularly inspect all areas of your life. There's an ancient script that says the little foxes spoil the vines. You might have a great looking vineyard, but if you let the little foxes run loose, they'll destroy it from the inside. And this doesn't just apply to individuals, whether it's a corporation, a government, or even a billionaire's business, every system needs a regular check. So don't let too much time pass before you take a close look at what's really happening in your life. Is everything working? Is your health where it should be? Are your relationships solid? Are your habits moving you forward or holding you back? It's the small things, the little habits that can make or break us. My mom used to say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now, here's the question. What if that's true? What if something that's simple could make all the difference? The real challenge is this. What's easy to do is also easy not to do. If it's as simple as eating an apple a day or walking around the block for your health and you don't do it well, that's where the trouble starts. If you should and you could, but you don't. That's a formula for disaster. Self-improvement starts with the most immediate thing that comes to your mind, something you can act on right away. If it's as simple as having an apple a day, then start there. If it's walking around the block, start there. Maybe you need to build your own personal development library, pick up that first book and say, this is the beginning of my new library. Or maybe you've been thinking about attending a seminar, then sign up. Even something as simple as keeping a journal can be your starting point. My mentor, Mr. Schaff, taught me the power of journaling when I was 25. It's been a key part of my success ever since. My journals are now part of my personal library. 
in them. I've captured notes, little poems, and valuable insights I've gathered over the years that have been crucial for my business and my speaking career. You can start with something small. Get a journal. Make that first entry. Take a simple action like having an apple a day or walking around the block. But here's the thing, you're not waiting for some grand revelation to come down from the sky. You start with the little things. Self-improvement isn't about waiting for the perfect moment. It's about making that first move, however small it may seem. Maybe it's about signing up for a class you've been thinking about, but kept putting off. Neglect is the real enemy. It's neglect that holds us back, that cuts off our potential, our money supply, our health supply, and every other supply. But the moment you decide to reverse that process, it doesn't matter where you start. The important thing is to say, I should, I could, I haven't, but now I will. That's the magic formula. I should, I could, I will. If it's something as simple as eating that apple, do it. If it's getting a journal, start writing. If it's picking up that next book for your growing library, make it happen. Or maybe it's finally signing up for that class or seminar. Whatever it is, the key is to take that first step. Once you do, the early return on those small steps will inspire you to keep going. And before you know it, you'll be well on your way to a whole new level of success. The journey to self-improvement doesn't start with grand gestures. It begins with small, consistent actions. And those small actions repeated over time will take you further than you ever thought possible. You'll be amazed at where you end up. I remember a time when I used to sit back, cross my fingers and say, I really hope things will get better for me. I thought if I could just get a lucky break or if circumstances would change, life would somehow improve. I hoped the economy would turn around or that my boss would suddenly become more generous or that the tough situations I was facing would magically resolve themselves. Then one day my mentor, Mr. Schaff, gave me a piece of advice that changed my entire outlook. He said, Mr. Ron, if you want things to change for you, you've got to change. At first, I didn't quite get it. I was so focused on wishing for external things to shift that I wasn't paying attention to the one thing I had control over myself. Schaff said, the economy isn't going to change for you. It's going to be the way it's always been. Circumstances are not going to magically improve, but if you change, everything around you will start to change. He went on, if you get better, everything else in your life will get better. That's at the core of the philosophy I've been teaching for years. And let me tell you, it was one of the best pieces of advice I've ever received. It's a promise. If you're willing to change, your whole world will change. But here's the flip side. If you don't change, the next five years of your life will likely look just like the last five. And that's a reality check. The good news is that at any moment you can make the decision to change. You can look at the past five years, learn from them, and make the next five years completely different. How? By making some simple changes. It could be a change in your health habits, your approach to work, your attitude, or even how you set goals. Whether it's about improving your income, becoming more valuable in your career, or achieving those personal goals you've always dreamed about, it all starts with small, simple steps. Now, here's something to consider. Take a look at your plans. Really examine them. Maybe you've got plans that are just too small. Are your goals big enough to inspire you? Are they stretching you to become the best version of yourself? By the time we're done here, you might decide to make some changes to expand those plans, adjust them, or even come up with brand new ones. You see, life requires regular adjustments, just like tuning a musical instrument. If you don't tune it, it gets off key. And the same thing happens with our plans. We need to keep revising, shaping, and refining them. This is not a one-time deal. It's an ongoing process. Even as we talk right now, I'm constantly fine-tuning my own plans. I'm always refining my goals, my strategies, and my own development. That's the secret to growth, constant improvement. So I encourage you to take a good look at your own plans. Take a look at the goals you've set for the future. Are they challenging you? Are they big enough to excite you? How about your plans for your family, your health, or your work? Do they align with where you want to go in life? Are they specific, actionable, and inspiring enough to pull you forward? If not, it's time to make some adjustments fine-tune those plans until they resonate with you. Create a vision so compelling that it motivates you to take action every day. The important thing is to make sure those plans are in place and they're pushing you towards growth, success, and a better future. Remember, success doesn't just happen by luck or circumstance. It happens by design. And that design starts with you making the decision to change, to grow, and to pursue a better life. Start by refining your plans, taking those small steps, and the world around you will start to shift in ways you never thought possible.
And soon you'll realize just like I did how powerful it is when you change. Now let's dive into a quick list that will help us not only count on the future, but also count on each other. This is an important list because the values here are foundational. They're the pillars of success, trust and leadership. So let's start with the first one. Morality doing what's right. It may sound simple, but in practice, it requires a strong sense of integrity. Early in my career, I learned something crucial. No matter who you're working with or what the situation is, you always want to set expectations so that later on people think, wow, this turned out better than I thought. Here's the rule. It's always better to under promise and over deliver. Keep your word, but be careful not to overstate what you can do. Why? Because when you give people more than they expected, you build trust and trust is everything. So here's the key better to understate than overstate. That's a principle of leadership we should all embrace. Next up in the vocabulary of leadership for our future is truth. Dealing in truth in everything we do, especially in leadership, we've got to speak and build on the truth. People can tell when someone's not being straightforward and the moment they catch on, trust is lost. Truth builds solid foundations. Falsehoods crack under pressure. So we lead by dealing in truth, honest, transparent communication that builds bridges, not walls. Next one is courage. Life is full of challenges and courage is what helps us face them. Let me give you an example. Imagine you're facing rejection. Three people in a row say, no, what do most people do? They get discouraged. But here's the lesson. Let your courage show, especially when things aren't going your way. The next three people you talk to might just turn things around and one of them could open a door you never expected. But that will only happen if you muster up the courage to keep going. And let's not forget there are two types of courage, public courage and private courage. Public courage is when you stand tall and make decisions in front of others. It's about showing strength when people are watching. But here's where private courage comes in. This is about what happens when no one else is looking. It's the courage to make personal resolutions and decisions that lead to growth. It's the quiet resolve to improve yourself, to change for the better, even when no one's around to applaud you. Speaking of change, Let's talk about the courage to change. Change isn't easy. It takes guts. And sometimes the hardest change is the decision to stay silent when it's better to listen. How often do we feel the need to fill the air with our thoughts when the most powerful thing we could do is just listen. Sometimes the most courageous act is knowing when to hold back, to let others speak and to absorb what's being said. That's real courage in action. Now here's a big one, the courage to forgive. Let me tell you, this one's tough, but it's absolutely necessary. Forgiving isn't about weakness. It's about strength. It's about letting go of resentment and moving forward. Forgiveness allows you to move on and without it, you're stuck in the past. And right alongside that is the courage to compromise. This means having the wisdom to give a little so someone else can give a little and together you can find a solution. It's not about losing. It's about creating a win-win situation where progress can be made. Then there's the courage to risk. Life is about taking chances, not reckless ones, but calculated risks. It's like planting seeds in the spring. If you expect a harvest in the fall, you've got to take some leaps. If you want the reward, my grandkids often ask me, why do you choose to spend time with people in Hawaii when you could be with us? And it's a valid question. I need to have a good answer because they'll ask me later. Was it worth it? And that's where wisdom comes in, knowing how to spend your time and making courageous decisions about what's most important. It's about finding that balance and it takes courage to make those calls. Another important thing to remember is keeping your word. What you promise, make sure you deliver. There's nothing more damaging than saying you'll do something and failing to follow through. It damages trust. And once trust is lost, it's hard to rebuild. Along with that comes the ability to admit mistakes. Sometimes we need to admit them publicly, sometimes privately, and most importantly to ourselves. There's real power in saying, I'm sorry. Those words can be the beginning of something new, a chance to start over. Never underestimate the power of a sincere apology. And here's another one. Faith, faith in others, faith in your family, and most importantly, faith in yourself. You've got to believe in the people around you and trust that they can rise to the occasion. But even more than that, you've got to believe in your own ability to grow, to learn and to become better. Faith is a powerful force. It's the fuel that drives us forward. Even when the road is tough. Now here's something worth reflecting on a touch of humility. You see, it's essential for all of us. The wealthy need to be taught not to be arrogant, 
and the less fortunate should guard against cynicism. Humility is the great equalizer. It reminds us to stay open, to stay teachable, and to approach every situation with grace. It doesn't matter where life has placed you, whether you're at the top of the ladder or just getting started, humility ensures you're open to growth, to learning, and to connecting with others. By embracing this humility, we pave the way for more understanding and harmony in our lives and communities. Now let's consider another crucial principle. Work with the people who deserve it, not just the ones who need it. This isn't about being heartless, it's about being wise with your time and energy. When you invest in those who truly appreciate your efforts, who take what you offer and grow with it, you create real, lasting value. Those are the people who will multiply what you give them. This idea has shaped my journey, and it could very well transform yours too. Be mindful of where you're placing your time because it's one of the most precious resources you have. And finally, here's something that's often overlooked. Start with something simple. Don't worry about making it perfect. Just start. Add value to your life little by little, day by day. You don't need a grand beginning. Why not you? I grew up on a farm in Idaho with no big advantages, yet here I stand. If we could parade countless stories of success before you, each one would say the same thing. Why not you? Everyone starts from somewhere, and often that somewhere is behind the starting line. But if we could do it, if we could rise and build, so can you. So ask yourself, why not you? Because the truth is, there's no reason it can't be. The only limit is how much you're willing to grow. That's my message. Start simple, keep growing, and the extraordinary will follow.